what she does. I would be terrified yeah. to do it. It's, yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Are we good over here also? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, we're here with Beth Thomas Cohen. Cohen? Cohen. Cohen. I don't know if it's Cohen or Cohen. No, I went full Jewish boy. Are you, you did you marry a Jewish guy? I did. Well, listen, <laughs> welcome to the religion. I wanted to complicate things. They are, they are I was half black, half white. I'm a Jewish. Is your mom or your dad? White. Your mom is white. Dad. Is she Jewish? No, Catholic. And your dad? Black. And is he Jewish? No. Just making sure. I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, no. Bit. I go with him a Moroccan Jew sometimes. When yes. Give me like a ten heads. Um, you smell lovely. I do. By the way. I don't know what that is. I've been wearing it since good. I worked as an editor at Oprah in 2000. Get out of here. No, the beauty closet. I got it for free. Oh, I, I was like, but you've been having it on for like four closet. years. Yeah, I walked into the. I walked <laughs> into the closet. And I was like, hey, yeah, who's I can be comedian. Um, well, that smells lovely. Thank you. What is this? Uh, this is authenticity. In, in, in... In nothing. In oh. Like, not a it's a symbol? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Look at her tattoo. <laughs> it's really cool. Tell me what it means to you. And by the way, you're an author. I am. And a bunch of other things, but your most recent yeah. claim to fame. Yeah. Uh, authenticity. This is shooting for anything positive. Love. This is Libra. And the Colts? Are you an Indiana Colts fan? No. Okay, I just didn't know. Totally, I'm a Buckeye. Yeah. Uh, oh. You know, an infinity. Oh, you get a Buckeye right here. O H I O. Oh God, I got two of them now. Uh, you know that? That's infinity. a sign of life. Infinity, right, right, right. And I have my daughter's initials back here, and then I have some that I'm not going to show. Okay, understood. <laughs> Which was your first one? Uh, the one, one of the ones you can't see. And what was it? Of? Um, it's a Chinese symbol for crazy. But not in a weird way, like okay. fun, crazy. And how old were you when you got that? I was old. I mean, not old, but I was. I was like you twenty. Were not a kid. Yeah, no, I was in my twenties, early twenties. Okay. Yeah. Do all your tattoos keep within the cone of your of who you are, or have or have you changed since you got? I'm always fascinated by someone who gets a tattoo and then totally. And then what happens if you change? Bit. No, I mean my whole book is about trying to not be something that you're that you're that you are. Um, no, I really think. You know, other than the fact that my in-laws hate me because they are Jewish, and I have now adorned my body with things that they don't think are Well, you just can't get married in their cemetery, I, but guess what? I wasn't going to anyway. You weren't going to anyway, honey, so you're um, good. But no, I, I hope that I still feel yeah. connected to them. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the book. It's called Drop the Act, It's Exhausting. So, so first of all, great title. <laughs> yeah. Did you help come up with that? I did. Okay. I am constantly exhausted by people and their... I can't curse on here. Yes, you can. They're bullshit. All their bullshit. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, I just got kind of sick of it. And when I, did you come to before? How long before you wrote the book did you come to that realization? Um, I think I came to the realization when I was 13, and then the realization went away. Okay. Because I was pushed by peers, and I got felt really stupid for a minute. And then I came back to that realization probably a little bit after college. But what does that mean, pushed by tears? I mean, I think I was influenced in ways that weren't just like, smoke a cigarette. Yeah. I think I really felt like I needed to change who I was in order to fit a mold that I never would fit in because, I mean, who wants to fit into a mold? But I reluctantly did. It's hard. It's and a hard And then I woke up one day and with. thought, this isn't working for me, and I hate my friends, and I hate myself. Yeah. And so... Probably co college, and then really evolved post-college. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? I grew up in Tenafly, New Jersey. All right, Tenafly. I don't know why I'm applauding. But you don't. Unplot, it's unplot, awful. Unplot. It's awful, and I'm back there, which is awful. Um, but I went to uh, a prep school in New Jersey called the Elizabeth Morrow School, and then Dwight Englewood. Nice. Sounds yeah. fancy. It I was, just saw a basketball game at Dwight Englewood. My son, son? My son yeah. played there. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Where, did, where does he go to school? He goes to Fresh. Oh, yeah. Totally. His son's like this insane basketball game. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I grew up in a upper white <laughs> suburbs. Okay. So that was hard for me a little bit. Yeah. But um, I went to great schools in the sense that I didn't really realize I was different until I kind of left the... Uh, and then I got out and I was like, oh, not everybody can date anybody or marry anybody they want. And, and my parents were always, love everybody for who they are. Right. You know? I don't know. I just didn't realize the world sucked. And how, how, what does that mean? And what does that look like? I think throughout my entire life, I always wanted a face value of just about everything. And um, I never.
never really felt like I got an honest account from a lot of people who they really were. So I had to navigate, you know, in and out of friendships. And I'm thinking, but this is this is exactly who I am, and I'm not quite sure why you don't feel like you need to be yeah. who you are, or why do you wear a mask, or isn't it easier to be more authentic? Um, and I didn't really understand why people didn't do that. It's hard for kids to do. Yes, that. and I and everybody goes through the obvious evolution of growing up trying to figure out who you are. Right. I mean, everybody does that. Um, but I find when I was writing the book that adults do it constantly. And, you know, then I lived in a city for 20 years and came out kicking and screaming a couple years ago with my husband. Um, and I got back to the suburbs and I thought, this sucks. <laughs> I mean, this is awful. This is everything I thought it was and more. Um, you know, it's kind of attack of the killer clones, same, same. Let's all do the same thing and dress the same way. And our kids can all go to school together. And we just don't really adapt well to that. And then people pretend like it's not like that, right? And so I don't really understand. I don't really understand that. And that was kind of that was. And apparently it resonated with a lot of people because the book. Um, I don't know. I guess I didn't realize there were so many other people that felt like me. Yeah. So you decided to write this book. I did. It was not in the cards. I was. I'm a publicist by trade. Okay. Um, I liked being behind, I've been in media for a long time, and I really liked being behind the scenes. Okay. Um, I worked for Oprah, um, I worked um, in magazines, and then I worked in-house at accessories companies as PR directors, and you know, kind of always in it, but didn't really feel like it needed to be focused on me. And then I just had a night. you had something to say. Yeah, and I never felt, I felt, it's strange, because I felt fulfilled because I worked with amazing people. I did, in amazing companies. Um, but I was putting pretty things on pretty people, and I think that at one point I was like, okay, well, this, I'm not doing anything to give back, um, and I very felt very kind of disconnected from my industry in that way. I'm not, you know, perfectly tall and thin and all these kinds of things, and, and as much as people um, say the fashion world is fun, it is fun. There's a wonderful things about the fashion industry, but a lot of those preconceived notions about the industry are actually true. Again people don't say, say right. and talk about right. and so I think I felt that like <laughs> you excuse me <clears throat> I felt that um, and I it, I was right place for, I don't know how this happened I'm really honest about it I'm so thankful that I could get the message out and tell me what the message is so it's called drop the act it's exhausting and um, there's a little blurb it's free yourself from your so-called together life to own exactly who you are I have a lot of shit I have a lot of great things, but I have a lot of bad things. Um, and I think that my relationships are stronger and I am more successful personally and professionally when I am exactly who I am. Okay. And I think that there's a way to relay these kind of conversations with your friends or family or coworkers without with scoof, without being rude and obnoxious. I know there's, I think social media for me um, is a very interesting place. Right. Um, I don't have Facebook. I'm probably the only person in the world that doesn't have Facebook, but there's so much talk on Facebook, so it gets me a little bit hot. I have it. Uh -huh. um, and social media is an interesting place because I see a lot of people out there saying, you know, girl power, do this, do that. And I think, and then they're like, um, you know, then I come back around and they're kind of, there's some sort of negative tone. So I try to make it so it's, you're not telling people, you know, how you feel with anger. Right. You come from a place of yes versus a place of no. Great. Um, and I think it's worked really well. I mean, I lost some friends. <laughs> not from the book. Okay. But growing up, I mean, I think you weed out people that... Um, Are not good for you. Yeah. I, I, I'm angry at myself that I... Didn't do it sooner, right? Yes. And yep. that, I, that I continue to condone relationships that um, were unhealthy. Both I have so male many, and female, right. you know, friends and, um, and some fun males that I've loved, you know, <laughs> like, you know, of course. Yeah, I'm angry at myself for that. I really, really am. Well, I had someone recently in my life a uh, 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 few months ago, I mean, you always hear it, but somehow it resonated with me, say, why are you keeping the bad people in your life? Like, what are you doing? Get rid of them. Yeah. You'll see your life is under, well, and I didn't just everything. Well, this person, I work with this person and this person, I and work it's in like this you capacity. Know. You know it, and I finally did it, and I and I got rid of like three big important important the three big people in my life, and, and going through it was awful. 
But let me tell you how cathartic it they is. They felt like this. So someone's oh, pressing and then they let totally. go. Yes. And it's like the weight is lifted off your shoulders yes. and it really feels and so I good. And I think, like, you know, it, I'm, I'm so, I don't know, I'm so liberal in my thinking. So, you know, sometimes you're around people. I think one of the difficult things about me intermarrying, inter interfaith marrying, and not with my husband, just socially, was, you know, I was around a lot of people who stuck to people who were like them. Yeah. And I have a very diverse group of friends, and I obviously have a very diverse family. So I never really fit into that mold. Right. And I never understood why that was an issue where, you know, if you were Jewish, you marry somebody Jewish, or if you're Catholic, you marry, I mean, and people, that's how people, you know, everybody thinks we, we've evolved. Right. We haven't evolved. People are just more politically correct, and so they keep it in their homes so that not everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, so they just know the proper ways to be inappropriate. I don't know. And just, so all of those things, I just thought, this is not, these are not my people. So is it a how-to book or is it a short story? It's so funny how to classify it. This is my publishing company's most worst nightmare. I fought uh, a little bit on this because they wanted it in self-help, yeah. which makes me want to vomit because I'm not telling anybody how I think they should do things. Right. It's more opening up a can of worms and saying, discuss this amongst yourselves. Okay. So it's broken up into the act okay. and then how to drop it. Oh, interesting. Um, so each individual act and then how to adjust Yeah, okay. you know, like, I don't know. And then I had to do those chapters about mar marriage and childbearing were my least favorite chapters because I think there's just, like, overly saturated in the market about how you should parent. But that's right. not what I'm saying. I'm saying, you know, sometimes you hate when you parent or whatever. Sometimes yeah. you love it. Right. Um, how many kids do you have? I have two girls. How old? Ten and six. Oh, okay. So time distance between them. Yeah. <laughs> On purpose. Okay. I can use a few more years. Oh, wait, how old are your girls? We're 17 months apart. I have a 20 month old and a three year old. Yeah. I was threatening divorce at that stage. That's where, yeah. But you come back and then you're like, oh, I like you again. Yeah. You know? yep. Yeah, totally. And you girls. So it gets better? No. <laughs> no, it gets, they take care of themselves. Yeah. A little bit more. They're more self sufficient and that gives you 10 more minutes to have another all I need. That's I need I, 10 more minutes. All, you know, mommy, yeah. like you're in the bathroom. You know, That's like, it. Ah. They need you then. They need you right totally. then. You can lock the door now when they're a little older. Yeah, I can't do it quite yet. No. No, my little one will literally fall off the bed. Totally. Um, okay, so you're not in self-help. No, so yeah, so it's technically broken up into humor. Oh, cool. Self-help. Now we're talking. Marriage, love. I mean, I don't know how, I guess they didn't know how to categorize it, so it falls wherever it sells. Okay. But I mean, I think it's just, a, I think it's a little bit of all of them. Right, right, right. But I don't tell anybody how I think they should do things. I just say, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's about race and judgment and marriage and children and career and, um, you know, all those, all those lovely things. Real. Are you happy with the way it turned out? I'm so happy. I'm writing another one. Oh, awesome. What's this one about? It's a sequel. Okay. Because there's a lot of acts. Okay. <laughs> Every time I come home, I write another act. Yeah. Uh, anytime someone drives me nuts. Um, yeah. So there's a sequel that I'm in in the works. Uh, but yeah, I think it I think it did, it resonated in some in some way. Love. And it's not just for women. I have a lot of I have a big group of guy friends and husbands, and they actually really really liked it. So it's not too girly. I'm not too girly, so it's probably part of it. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about your yeah. time with Oprah. It's fascinating yes. the fact that you could just say, so I spent some time with Oprah, and then <laughs> yeah. you named like four of the things, and I was like, yeah, I know, she's just like, Oprah? Stuck on the Oprah part. Yeah, she's all, I mean, she's everything. Did, where did you work for the show or for the magazine? So I worked for Cosmo Girl. I okay. launched Cosmo Girl magazine. And then Oprah was launching a magazine, and um, I did not spend enough time at Cosmo Girl at the time. Yeah. But I really wanted to work for Oprah. Okay. <laughs> and I was young, and I was like, I'll do anything. Yeah anything um and so as they created the magazine i went over as a fashion assistant fashion is my background so okay. I mean, really the media area is um fashion so i went over as a fashion assistant with like 10 other people in the magazine. i mean there okay. was just it was just us on half a floor um which is crazy to think about it so it was crazy hours um but it was all it's awesome and she's everything i mean have you ever no okay really okay yeah she's everything you would ever imagine and more and anything that ever anybody ever says negative about, I think to myself, she's a black billionaire and she's female. 
So people are gonna say things no matter what. what. Exactly. So like, but no, she's awesome. She's giving. She's. I don't know how she does it. She like barely sleeps. Um, she's involved. She's active. She's kind. She's giving. She's everything you think. Love that. And you know what I love about her? She, her act is fully dropped. Like she'll, you know, she was standing in the fashion closet and her little lady being like, all right, what are we trying on today? I mean, she was as normal as you could possibly imagine. That's great. Truly, truly normal. Gotta love to Stops hear that. Stops and talks to everybody. Love to hear that. Um, we were in uh, the building originally before the Hearst building was built up on like 53rd and 7th. I think Extra was in there at the time. And, you know, she would just walk right in. People would be like, oh my God. Yeah. And what year was this? This was, two, I was there in like 99, 2000, and I left in 2005. Okay. Yeah. The heyday of the start of uh, of the magazine. Of, uh, is it O? Of O, yeah. Yeah. It was great. She was great. She was awesome. Do you work at Hearst right here? I don't anymore. Oh, okay. I, that's the, that's, no, we didn't have it. The building. The one that's like a triangle yes, or something. Yes. That, no. Oh, yeah, right that, there. All those triangles. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. No. I was so, they were, we were still in separate buildings when okay. I was at Hearst. Gotcha. But she's awesome. She's everything you could ever imagine and more. Love that. So great. I had a great, I had a great time. What did you learn from her? Probably to be, I, you know what it was in line for me with the magazine was to be your authentic self. I mean, she was always all about kind of being your authentic self. And, you know, she'd go on the cover of a magazine all the time. And she's not the quintessential fashion person either. Um, but it worked. I mean, it was was right behind Cosmopolitan, so we were too mad for a very long time. Yeah. Um, you know, authenticity. That, which is probably why I didn't kill myself working in the fashion industry. And then I think, okay, I've been here long enough. Maybe I should do the L's and all these, you know, and I have a lot of friends in the industry. And, and I thought to myself, I went in for a couple of interviews, different places, and I thought to myself, hmm, not so much. I didn't fit in here. Yeah. I always felt like I didn't fit in. I don't know. With fashion? With anything. Of course. High school, I was a disaster. I moved up from another country. I didn't know how to speak. I didn't know how to dress. Through college, I was not really ever me. I knew I wanted to be in TV, but my body wasn't there yet. Like, I had to grow into my face and grow yeah. into my hair and yeah. grow into all of it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, right. And I'm woefully insecure when I walk into any kind of party or a group session with anything. I'm not good in social, yeah. even though I can get up in front of yeah, and 20 do billion right. people totally and do stand-up yeah. comedy and know nothing about anything. Yeah. <clears throat> I get on here for four hours, half the time I have nothing prepared and I'll just speak and that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. I'm not afraid to make mistakes, I'm just, sometimes I'm really insecure and yeah. I just don't, I don't, like I'm not a fashion person, I wear what's comfortable yeah. to me, always. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was, I mean, people be like, look at you, I said, yes, I like, I like clothing and accessories, but I didn't care about all the little nuances of, of what it really meant to be in that industry and, and, and I applaud those who can stick in it and really do truly love the nuances of fashion right and the trends and keeping up with it yes and, and it. I think I'm an inadvertently that's you know you either you can either you either are kind of that way or not and I, I am that way but it wasn't I wasn't in love with all of the messaging okay that makes sense yeah and you did something about it yeah which I didn't even I mean this was so not what I was supposed to do but I feel good about it good and as long as everybody can kind of get on the message of you know be kind and all those kinds of things, but be your true self, then, then I made the right decision. Do you instill this in your children? Same thing? Constantly. From an early age? Constantly. And how do you do it and when do you start? I don't, you know, my daughter, um, my oldest daughter also is kind of, I think, you know, as much as I say in our home, in our cultural diverse home, she'll come home and say things to me like, you know, mommy, they think black, my daughter, my youngest daughter is platinum blonde. Um, and like the color of your shirt. Wow. <laughs> so I'm the nanny everywhere. Um, literally, I'm the oh, nanny wow. everywhere. I okay. mean, but you know, nine out of 10 times I don't mind and sometimes the 10th time yeah. I'm like, ah. Right. So she'll say, oh, you know, everybody thinks that Lila's adopted. And I said, well, first of all, even if she was adopted, that's not that big of a deal. So it shouldn't bother you. You just yeah. need to explain it. And she said, well, why do they ask that? You know, why do, why do they care? So we're, I'm constantly having conversations with them sure. about it, and it's a lot. It's race differences and religious differences. Um, and we, yeah, I talk about it all the time. I mean, I think I annoy them sometimes. And my daughter was horribly bullied last year. We just, I actually, she now goes to school where I went to school, but I pulled her out of the public school in my town 
because she was bullied horribly for the entire year. Uh, horribly. And I think to myself, yes. And it's like, I mean, we're in a metropolitan suburb. Right. What are they doing? Right. You know, it was right. horrible. So yeah, I do. Yeah. I instill it. I mean, hopefully it'll resonate. I mean, my mom instilled it in me, like drilled it in my head. Yeah. It finally did. Finally clicked. Look, it's good. You're, you're having open conversations with your kids. I think that's wonderful. And I think you just wrote a book on how being yourself is the only way to be. Yeah. And in some way, shape, or form, that is going to resonate with the children. And they are going to grow I up knowing so. that. And I love that you're setting that example for them. I, I hope I'm doing that for my kids I'm sure you every are. day. The worst is that you can't control them when they leave your home. Right. So I've got I mean, like 27 years to think about that. Totally. She'll come home and be like, oh, mommy, uh, I learned a new curse word today, which I'm totally not saying on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but everyone can probably understand that it's yes. the color of my skin. Uh -huh. And she's like, I said, what? She said, oh, yeah, a little girl said they say it in camp. It's like one of the curse words. I thought, oh, that's good. Right. Okay, well, sit down, honey. Right. We're going to have a little chat. Let's chit chat. You may have a little chat about some things. Um, so the book again is called Drop the Act. It's a wonderful, wonderful title. It's, um, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And if more people did it, I think we would, uh, a number of things, have a clearer path towards uh, the White House. Um, oh my God. We would also <laughs> all be a lot friendlier. But I think that people say that all the time. They're like, oh, well, you know, Trump, he says it like it is, and I'm like, because I'm there is a some sort of correlation. I feel like with the book in that authentic self and saying how you feel and things like that. There is such a definitive line between being that and being authentic about how you feel. Right. And I think that that line gets blurred very easily and all too often. I agree. People say it a lot. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting next eight days. Seven days. Six days. It just... Oh, I mean, no. It's like... It's like six a two minutes. Week. <coughs> it's <right. laughs> It is. That's but I, then funny. I think to myself, oh my god, we are we are a country <laughs> divided. One quick question. Do you have any tattoos? I have none. I For a split second, I thought about getting one when I was rowing crew in college. But then I broke my ankle two weeks in and never even made the team. And I wouldn't. my dad would have killed me if I got a tattoo. Yeah, that, my husband is always, he in theory wants one. He's like, my parents would kill me. I'm yeah. like, but you're 41. Right. And he's like, no. I said, listen, you either know you want one or you either don't. Either be your authentic self or not, right? Right? <laughs> totally. Exactly. I, so, so I tell him to not, don't get one. Because <laughs> that's his Because that's his authentic self. self. You're like, do not get a tattoo. You'll regret that. He's the Cohen? He's the Cohen. We are Cohen. so different. What's his name? Brian. Brian Cohen. Is he a Cohen? He's a Cohen. I actually know a Brian Cohen. No, he know his parents, his father's You know son. Brian Cohen also? I'm sure you do. I know Brian Cohen from the NFL Network. Oh, no, I know. I mean, come on. When I do dinner reservations, there's like, are you Beth Cohen? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you have five hundred right, Beth, Beth Cohen. Cohen. Totally. Um, but his father's side is Orthodox, um, and his mother's <laughs> side was conservative. So when I came into the mix, like, oh, they were like, woohoo! Amazing. Yeah. I love them though. I love them dearly. I think just in it, we met in college, at like when we were twelve. So. Um. <laughs> Uh, well, Beth, you're so lovely, and I love the concept yeah. of the book. I love the theory behind it. I love who you've become and where you're going, and I'd love you to come back to totally. us as you get the next one out there and let's chat about it. Absolutely. You're wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Beth Cohen, one of 27 Beth Cohens that you guys are. Well, that's why I stick the Thomas in there. Cause then I, um, oh, then you at least a little bit more. Beth Thomas Cohen, one of I only 12 it. Beth Thomas Cohens you guys probably already know. No. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Awesome.